waiting on me. Waiting on the Batman team. That's my fault. I gotta be more privy to him wanting his stories. Do I need headphones for this one? Did I have headphones last time? Y'all just, y'all just, uh, that's why you got the JBL? Uh -huh. I can hear them from there? Yep. See, this new school shit is over my head. You ready for your question? Oh, they want to see my pretty smile. They want to see my pretty smile. Dan, start us off with old Bubba Bad Man. I'm feeling good, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being a part of the new PFL show. And we uh, we ready to go. Yeah, last minute opponent change in this one. How has that uh, affected your approach, Brad? It pisses me off. It always pisses me off. I, I, I can't stand when we've been training and focusing. What's up, Dewey? What's up, Twilight? Yeah, I'm a teacher. I'm gonna show y'all the secret elevator. There's one that nobody knows about. Anyways, um, I hate when they change the opponent because we're focused on a lot of tendencies. We're focusing on weaknesses. We're focusing on things that my opponent does badly that I do well. And then you know they change it in the last. This time was even later than the last change, so they change it basically in the last week, and we got to deal with that. So I hate I hate opponent changes, but when we're ready and we're we're war ready for pretty much anything that the opponent may bring, when the opponent changes, we're we're pretty much ready for that too. So uh, that's the case. We just we just don't like to change. Give me the same person that I can work for eight weeks, and, and y'all see the best bad man you can see. But we make changes, we adapt on the spot, and you know we roll with the punches. So are there any uh, similarities? Absolutely not. None. None. He's five six. The other dude was. He's five nine. The other dude's five six. He does spinning back kicks, marses, darces, and guillotines. And the German guy did not do any of those things. So yeah, it's a complete change, night and day. The last time you fought, uh, you hurt your eye towards the end of it. Did that affect your training camp at all, or anything you had to do differently? Uh, we, we didn't let Twilight Timmy punch on me as much as he likes to, uh, as far as my camp goes. So in the beginning, we, we, we had to, we had to keep the young bull off my face a little bit. But after that, you know, we, you know, it was mostly about foot, my, you know, I, I jammed my foot up a little bit, which most people didn't know. But for the most part, man, we just, we, we had the regular camp and we kept it cool the whole, the whole way through. And then the last thing for me with the featherweight division, they deadlocked three points uh, towards the top. Is that affecting your game plan at all going to this, knowing that you might need bonus points? No, the whole the, the game plan is always to get them up out of there. Um, I believe last time, if I was in a position to had to to have to get Kyle Boshiak out, I I would have done it. Like if I if it was this round and I know everyone's got three and someone just got a knockout or someone just got a bonus, and then I put Boshiak on his butt the first time, then I would have been more privy to trying to get that guy out of there with the next couple rounds or the next couple punches. But um, since that's not the case and we'll see what it looks like tomorrow or on Friday we're gonna make sure that we do the right things but the the goal is always to knock them out and I believe I can with this guy awesome. thank you. Ben hey Bubba it's been almost a decade since your coaching staff spot on the ultimate fighter what are some of the biggest ways you've changed since then uh, man, I'm not the wrestler that I was then, you know, where I was coming fresh out of college, fresh off of, uh, you know, just kind of learning MMA and, you know, being under the tutelage of John Jones and those guys and, and, you know, having different management. I would say a whole lot has changed. Almost everything has changed. I'm, I'm a much better striker. I'm a much better wrestler for mixed martial arts now. Um, I'm much more dedicated and focused on the task at hand and I got way more children to feed. <laughs> Now, in your last fight, again, it was all going great until that eye was damaged. Can you detail the thoughts going through your mind when you were unable to see out of your right eye? Uh, line them up, put them in a scope, and get them out of there. Uh, that was really the, the focus. I, I wouldn't say that things changed. Yeah, it, yeah. No coach wants to make sure. <laughs> coach wants to make sure y'all know I got poked. I didn't get damaged. I didn't get hit. I got poked. He wants y'all to know that our defense was sound enough to not have any any random hits. But um, after he poked me in the eye, um, you know, my most my, my focus was to just get him out of there. You know, and I tried to line him up. I tried to line him up. 
put him in my scope, the only scope that I had, and, and, and you know, put the X on his face. And I, and I, and I really did. I, I felt like I hit him better in the third round with one eye than I did most of the fight because I, I, I tagged him quite, quite a few times in that third round after, the, my, after my eye was damaged. So that's for sure. The Michael Bisping approach does seem to work. Uh, now, you have spoken in the past about how your divorce affected your last performance. I was hoping we could get maybe an update on that and how you are emotionally coming into this fight. Sound. 100% sound, man. We uh, we let the outside of the cage things be the outside of the cage things, and that is more organized and more uh, a more of a understood plan. And now the inside cage stuff will ex explode through my uh, what's the word ex ex explode through my performance. You'll see uh, a way more focus and way more sound, bad man. I love it. Best of luck, brother. Thank you. Uh, Daniel Levy. Daniel Levy from Half the Battle here. Bubba, welcome to Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you. I like being here. Yeah, how are you liking it so far? How's the heat compared to Cali? Well, I'm an East Coast cat, so me being in Virginia and coming out to Atlanta was something that we did kind of often. You know, we love the, the festivities that Atlanta brings, so it's, it's not that bad. Um, I'm actually in Vegas now, so Vegas heat and California heat and Atlanta heat, that's three different types of heat, but nonetheless, I'm a bad man, I'm a fireman, so I bring all the heat regardless of where I go, so it doesn't matter. So ATL is known for their rich history of fights. Fights of all time have happened here. That's not that have happened here. Do you like fighting in a place like this where MMA is so well respected and appreciated? Absolutely. Anytime you can get a, a, a well educated crowd, anytime you can get somebody or, or, or people who know how to, you know, bring that energy to, to a certain event, anytime you walk into an event and you can feel the energy of the, the fans and the audience is a good thing. So if, if it's known for that, which I, I'm just now finding out, but if it's known for, you know, having fighters be put on the show because of, you know, the energy they bring, then, then you guys are in for, for a good night. Oh, it's definitely known for that, man. Does the awesome. pain bring you back to your wrestling days where you would just go up against anyone and everyone? Does what bring me back to those days? Your opponent change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why I don't really fret it too much. It pisses me off and it angers me. You know, I, you know, obviously I don't blame the the guy who got hurt, and you know, it's just another opportunity I would that I would take for um, if I was my opponent who just got the late call. Um, but you know, we we're ready for anything and everything. When we when Coach Dewey says that you're ready, I don't even trust in my own thoughts about my own body about my own preparation. If Dewey says I'm ready, he's seen more fights and more fighters prepare for fights than I have. So uh, I go with what he says and he says we're ready so anybody can get it Lastly, the featherweight rings are the closest head to head of any division in the PR do you feel like that million dollars is right there for the taking 100% uh, I believe it's bad man versus bad man uh, I will be a world champion in the next four months I'll be a millionaire in the next four months and I've been saying this for a while now so it's it's almost inevitable in my mind I appreciate it. Welcome to Atlanta, and good luck Friday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Darnell. Darnell Duvani here with Mystic Black Gallery. What's up, Bubba? What's going on? I had to, I knew it was a brother. As soon as y'all said Darnell, I knew it was a brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So this is your second card of the year. Uh, your opponent, Kyle, is on the main card, but you're not on the main card. Do you think there's any issue there of you not being on any of these main cards? The crowd loves you bring that action every single time you're in that cage. Man, like you you said it, I didn't say it, but man, I've been thinking it. It's like how do you not put one of the most exciting, one of the best interviewers, one of the best uh, as far as, you know, getting the crowd involved and just, you know, just the things that I do inside the cages is, is, is TV warranted. I don't know why they continue, I guess, to, to bring up the numbers for the ESPN Plus or whatever. I don't know what they're trying to carry me for, but I need PFL to get on it because this is ridiculous. So Y'all going to put a dude that I just smoked on the main card. Um, I'm not understanding it, but you know, we put on a show regardless. I put on a show during sparring. I put on a show in the back hitting mitts. Um, you know, I'm, I am a show. So I guess when PFL starts understanding that we'll get on the big card. But until then, I guess I got to be a world champion to be on the big card or something, but we in negotiations, this contract year, we're going to do the things we need to do inside the cage. And then when it gets to that table, I, I'm sure Ali Abdelaziz, the best agent in the game is going to give him that noise. To see on that main card soon, Bubba. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dave. Hey, how you doing, 
from Bubba. Uh, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off that. I was going that route too, my man. You are definitely, easily one of the most entertaining PFL fighters on the roster. Uh, not even, isn't it important for you to not even become the face of the division, almost a, one of the faces of the whole brand of the organization. Is that important to you? Absolutely. Uh, I want to carry the brand. I want to carry who I am. I, you know, I have declined other organizations' contracts and things like that, you know, and, and, and I believe it's because of my, you know, my ability to speak, my ability to entertain and still put on good shows. Um, you know, and I guess I can say there were some bad performances last year. So, you know, I give them that leeway to be like, oh, let's put them on the undercard. But honestly, man, I, every time I hit the big screen, every time I hit the big shows, I, I put on a great performance. So, you know, I, I'm trying to calculate what I need to do differently. But, you know, I guess the suplexes and the sitting them on their butt with these punches ain't doing enough. So, I, you know, we need to get some knockouts out of there, maybe get a little bit more hungry. Um, me and Dewey worked on a little blood in the water techniques to try to put people out once we heard them. So, you know, you know, we're going to try to get that done this time. And, you know, I, I guess maybe with putting them out and then saying what I need to say afterwards will get me on the on a bigger show, on a bigger card. Gotcha, gotcha. And then after your win on Friday, uh, yep. do you have any summer plans with the uh, family? What, you got anything big coming up? I like, I like that you said that. You already know how I'm feeling after the win on Friday. I do plan on going to Disney World, but I got to calculate it out because, you know, I, um, my baby's just – I'll be going to go get my babies right after the fight. Um, and then, you know, Disney World ain't a two-day thing when I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to, like, really have a really good time. So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a space it out so I can maybe even do it early. Or maybe after I win the million, we, we hook up with Disney World and do some kind of VIP type thing. But definitely plan on uh, having a great summer this year. Get that Fast Pass. It's worth it at Disney. Get the Fast Pass. All right. I'm on it. I'm on it. Gotcha. Trevor. With the HITP network. As the bad man, you know better than anyone that not exactly anyone can qualify for that kind of nickname, right? So <laughs> I just wanted to know if, if you made a Mount Rushmore, four fighters, past or present, each of them have to qualify as a quote unquote bad man. Who would those picks be for you? Man, gotta go with John Jones, gotta go with Uriah Faber. He was a big influence for the little guy back in the day. Uh, his swag was was a swag that everybody wanted to be like um, as far as, like, you know, really good striking and, and really good wrestling. So got to go John Jones, Uriah Faber, and you got to put the OG Dewey Cooper in there, Black Cobra Striker Systems. I'm biased, so I'm definitely putting him on my Rushmore. Um, and so we got the skinny guy, we got the little guy, we got the big guy in Dewey. Um... Uh, and then you put a wrestler in there. Let me see. Who's the best wrestler in the MMA game? Dewey, who is the best wrestler in MMA? The best wrestler in MMA. I guess you can go. Randy Let's go with Couture. Shout out PFL. Let's go with Randy Couture. Yeah. I like my, I like my Rushmore. John Jones, Uriah Faber, Dewey Cooper, and Randy Couture. Put them on the, put them on the board. That's what I like. I, I, I like all of those choices. Very good. I wasn't exactly expecting you to leave yourself off that one. Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to put myself in there just yet. I'm I'm still writing my story. They just they just now chiseling the bricks. I'm 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 still in the game, baby. I'm I'm only talking about the guys that undid it and showed me how to do it until this point. But um yeah, I I'll put myself up there a little bit later because of all of it, you know. I think the route not Rushmore not only does goes with your performance and then what you do in the cage, but you know, who you are and how you carry yourself, how you interview, how the people like you, how the fans accept you, you know, things like that. I believe is a totality of who you can be in the mixed martial arts world. So, at the end of the day, when the book is written, I'm going to definitely be on the Mount Rush my Mount Rushmore or at least. Respect, Bubba. Thanks. Best of luck. No doubt. Max Hey, Bubba, this is Max Bell with the Go On Live Network. Thanks so much for taking the time, man. No doubt. I just had a quick question, kind of jump back to one of the original questions. You mentioned how the change in opponent is annoying after eight weeks of preparation. How do you prepare for a guy after you've essentially finished your training camp? Uh, you just look at his tendencies and you try to capitalize on the things that you've already been working on. You try to, you know, implement a little bit of uh, conditioning 
towards maybe weakening that guy because he just got a short notice. And the biggest thing about it is the mentality. I know that I've been in the field hunting and looking for um, a kill, and that guy's kind of been sitting on the couch, even though I know when I've been sitting on the couch, it's not as, it's not as real when they don't give me an opponent yet. Until they give me an opponent, until I know who I'm fighting, that's when it becomes real. So these guys who kind of get the late notice, I implement the mentality of he has not been in the field in the, in, you know, in the dirt hunting like I have. So, you know, that's the only change. That's the only thing I try to implement. Definitely understandable. And kind of piggyback off that real quick, I mean, this is his first fight in the regular season format. Do you think that's going to affect him a little bit, maybe with nerves or anything like that? I mean, he's fighting a bad man. That's going to always make a nigga nervous. That's very true. I appreciate the time, man. Good luck on Friday. No doubt. Mills. What's going on, Ballers MMA Locker Room, part of Pop Sports Radio? What's up? What's up? Last time speaking to, last time speaking to you, asked you, man, what was the good word of the day? You said Batman. So I'm, I'm gonna rephrase that same question. What's the good word of the day? Knockout. Big points. Big six. Pick six. Knockout. Quick six. Knockout. That's the word. and everything like that. Man, what would it take to see him to come out and corner you in one of these events? him in the trenches with me I don't just put anybody in my corner man so you know I, I love what we did with fight tips and everybody all all around the world always tells me how much they noticed me or seen me or loved my videos with him awesome dude awesome techniques I think he's doing a great thing with his YouTube but uh you got to be in the trenches with me you got to be in shooting it shooting in the gym with me when it comes to being in my corner I don't just you know just be thinking that the corner is a is a light thing you know you need that warrior who's been there with you you know to, to to, to look you in your eyes and tell you truths or or tell you t tell you things to motivate you. So, you know, I, I, I would take a lot, but he'd have to be there with me on the grind. Got it. Like Kobe said, you wasn't with me shooting in the gym, right? Truth. All right, man. Good luck, man. Thank I, you. I know you're going to turn them heads out there in Atlanta. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Turn up coming.